An Affliction of the Heart by Anonymous Pegasus Chapter 9 Sympathy Kuno sipped at a glass of lemonade. The straw slipped between her large front teeth so that she could effectively suckle the cool liquid from the glass. Warren was busy cleaning up, and Kuno wasn't going to lift a damn hoof to help him. She'd even told him so. Until he stallioned up and stood up to the drug dealers, he would have to deal with his own mess. The three ponies had been rather thorough in their search, and they hadn't exactly cleaned up after themselves, leaving a large mess behind for Warren to rearrange. Thankfully, he wasn't a pack rat, and there wasn't a huge amount of mess everywhere. Mainly, it was putting the drawers back in, closing the cupboards, fixing up the pots and pans, and assorted chores. And Kuno just watched through the entire thing. So this dagger tail, why has he got you growing this stuff for him? Kuno asked, sipping at her lemonade happily. Because he can push me around, Warren snorted once, pushing a drawer back into its slot. Kuno pondered for a moment, before asking bluntly, How did a wimp like you get in the Royal Guard? Thanks for the self-esteem boost, Warren growled, picking up another drawer and sliding it partway into its slot, beginning to toss spoons and forks into it. Any time, Kuno said, nodding with a smile. It was almost a minute of throwing cutlery into the drawer before Warden spoke again. I failed the Royal Guard. Rather badly, I might add. I knew it wasn't for me, but I still didn't have my special talent. Once I found out I was a dab hoof at gardening, I needed something to give me income. I don't have the endurance to work a field large enough to sell produce. So, I applied for the Guard Reserve. I guess Shining Armor took pity on me. Figured I'd never be called into action anyhow, so there we go. The armor's bitchin', though, Kuno said with a wise nod and a snicker. I can totally see myself getting to like dressing up in it. The two were silent for a while, before Kuno asked suddenly. So this aurora, what's it used for? Hallucinogenic, mainly. Makes you see lots of pretty colors and lights. I know from experience, Warren admitted with a wry grin. You tried some? Kuno asked, winking her nose in distaste. I may have tried some on my own if I was to take it in at my own pace. Daggertail, however, didn't give me such luxuries. The Pegasus said with a sad shake of his head, sweeping up the broken plates from the kitchen floor. Kuno blinked once. Daggertail gave you drugs? You gotta remember. I was in a pretty bad place. Swarm had just died. I was alone. I was kind of depressed, I guess, Warren said, looking down at his hoof with a deep frown. Kuno guessed from his tone that he had been more than a little depressed. The first thing Daggertail did was get me alone when I made a trip to town, and then ejected me with some of the stuff, Warren said with a bitter smile. <laughs> he felt great, for a while. Wasn't long before I needed more. Kuno wrinkled her nose again, giving the Pegasus a look of mild disgust. You didn't try to resist? I was depressed, Warren said defensively, looking away. My wife had just died. And while I was under the influence of Aurora, I could forget the pain for a little while. Of course, once I was good and addicted, he told me that I had to take over growing it for him. Or I'd not get any more. I reluctantly agreed, and of course, I was too high at that point to even look after a tomato bush, let alone Aurora. I messed things up, and Daggertail was none too pleased. I realized I needed to get off the stuff, so I quit. Just like that, Kuno asked doubtfully, looking Warren up and down. Forgive me if I seem unconvinced. Warren snored at once. It wasn't that easy, I guess. I took a few days worth of food and water in the bathroom and handcuffed myself to the toilet. Drastic, Kuno stated with a blink. Yeah, well, after the first day, I was a mess. I'd already wasted all my water trying to lubricate my hoof enough to squeeze free of the cuff. By the time the guards showed up to see why I missed my weekend training, I was almost dead. It wasn't until after I recovered from that that Daggertail figured he could bend me to his will with threats of violence. And actual violence when I resisted. I've been in his employ ever since. Still got scars from the cuffs. Warren said, look, holding out his hoof. In Kuno's opinion, they look more like knife marks than handcuff marks. Jeez, Kuno said with a slow shake of her head. You're like a doormat. Why don't you stick up for yourself? Because I get hurt, 
Osborne stated sadly, picking up the dustpan and dumping the contents into the bin. And I don't like getting hurt. I wish I was some big gung-ho guard, capable of beating up twelve drug dealers with one hoof on my back. But I'm not. And you didn't tell me all of this in the beginning because... Kuno asked flatly. It's one thing to bow to violence, and another thing entirely to be addicted to the drug you're supposed to be growing. Warren said with a sad shake of his head. I guess... I guess I didn't want you to thinking I'm some kind of a loser. The Pegasus trailed off then before giving a soft, mirthless chuckle. Too late for that, huh? And with that, Warden moved towards the bathroom to continue cleaning, head lowered in shame. Kuna was found settling down in her bed that evening, leaving Warden to his own bed. She felt uncomfortable around him at that moment, and wanted to give him space. The Pegasus had obviously been through a lot more rough patches than he let on. The changeling put the pillow up against her chest, laying on her chin on it, and closing her eyes. She knew that there were ponies who were pretty bad off in the world, but she had never really interacted with them on any personal basis. She had always targeted happy homes, where the love was the strongest. Broken pegasi were rarely a good source of long-term love. There was a rustle of movement behind her, and Kuno lifted her head to peer back over her shoulder. She blinked once at the image that greeted her. Warren was standing, awkwardly in her doorway holding a large cream-colored box with candles sticking out of it, burning merrily. What are you burning? Kuno asked, pushing herself onto her hooves and turning around to face the guard. I... Warden trailed off, biting his bottom lip. Gosh, this is going to sound corny, but when you told me that you'd never had a birthday, I just figured... The peg is sighed slightly, shaking his head and then stepping over to the bed, laying the box down. With it at the new angle, Kuno could see into the box. She realized now that it was a cake box. A large, circular brown cake lay inside the box, dual layered with white edgings and a single large word across the center. Kuno. Three candles were spaced across it, at even intervals spiraled red and white like a candy cane. It wasn't a very large cake, but it was a birthday cake. A birthday cake for her. Happy birthday, Kuno, Warren said quietly. I, I didn't know what flavor you like. The top is chocolate and the bottom is banana nutmeg. I can go back tomorrow and get it changed if you want one better. N no! Kuno squeaked, finding her voice. Staring down at the cake, the burning candles reflected twice in her wide, surprised eyes. It, it's, it is perfect! A sigh of relief left the guard. Well, make a wish and blow out the candles. Kuno blinked once and then began to almost panic. But, but I, I don't know what to wish for. Wish for world peace, Warren suggested with a wry smile. It's just a formality. The changeling stared down at the cake, then leaned in with a shaky inhale. It was her very first birthday wish for her. Kuno gave Warden a long stare, made her wish, and then blew out the candles, plunging the room into darkness. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. Warren started singing happy birthday to her, and Kuna was glad for the sudden darkness brought about by the extinguished candles. She was quite certain she had lost her composure, and there was an odd tightness in her throat, making it hard to swallow. Warren finished singing happy birthday to her, he really was a terrible singer, and then offered her a bread knife to cut the cake with. Kuno turned back to the cake, and began to cut herself with a laser-precise eighth of a cake, lifting it with a trembling hoof to her mouth. The first bite was heaven. The cake itself was moist, perfectly baked. The banana and chocolate didn't mix well, and the icing was too sweet, but it was her birthday cake. Blinking once, Kuno looked up, not even realizing that Warden had left the room. But he had returned, tentatively holding out a box for her. The changeling blinked several times to get her eyes to cooperate in the darkness. Once her eyes adjusted to the dark, she saw the box for what it was. A present. A real birthday present. It was flat and wide, square-shaped, with a large red bow around the middle of it. A tag hung from the side, which she assumed also had her name on it. Kuno's voice was hiding somewhere in the pit of her stomach, and it took two tries to force it up past the lump in her throat. You did? All this for me? 
Warren gave a curt nod. Everyone deserves a birthday. Even changelings. Reaching out with shaking hooves, Kuno took the box, laying it down on the bed and then carefully unwrapping it. Right before she opened the box, Warren spoke up. I, I, I wasn't sure what to get you. I hope it isn't demeaning or anything. Please don't hurt me if it's insulting. Carefully, Kuno pushed up the top flat of the box, revealing the collar resting underneath it. With a crinkle of soft wrapping paper, she removed the collar, holding it up in the moonlight. It was a bright, vibrant red collar with gold stitching around the edges, and her name, her entire name, stitched out across the back of it. It's, it's perfect, Kuno muttered, not trusting herself to speak any louder without her voice cracking. I couldn't find a bell in town, but... But Kuno had already unclasped the collar and was sliding it around her neck with shaking hooves, turning to face away from the Pegasus, so he could do it up. A quick tug and press, and the collar was secured in place. Thank you, Warren, Kuno said, her voice cracking as she tried her best to swallow the lump in her throat. I really mean it. It was nothing, Warren said with a shrug, turning to leave. Kuno pounced on the Pegasus from behind, wrapping her hooves around his neck in a firm, earnest embrace, hugging him firmly. The Pegasus paused in confusion, blinking back at her and giving a slight smile. Happy birthday, Kuno. Thank you, Warren. Really. This means a lot to me. Kuno sat on her bed, eating pieces of her cake and licking icing off her hooves. She had already set aside some of it for Warren to have if he wished, which was only fair. She was very careful not to get her new collar dirty, and she saw that Warren was in the doorway, watching her from the shadows, apparently thinking he was hidden, and he was smiling. Kuno was surprised by the Pegasus. He was beaten, trodden into the dirt, abused, and had gone through more hardship already than Kuno would her entire life, she was sure. And yet, he was still just happy to watch her eat. He was happy to make others happy. Every time her hoof brushed out her new collar, and with every bite of her cake, Kuno felt a little worse. Here she was, emotionally manipulating this Pegasus for his love. She was using him as a food source, and he was happy to just make her happy. A monster. A beast. She wasn't even sure what to feel anymore. But one thing was clear in her mind. The Pegasus was having an effect on her. A profound one. When she had made her very first birthday wish, something for her, the only thing she could think to wish for was for Warren to find happiness someday. For that poor, downtrodden Pegasus to at least find some peace from the problems that plagued him. And who knew? Maybe she was even starting to like him.